What's up, everyone? This is Christian Duke from StrengthAddicts.com with another great podcast for you. First and foremost, I want to thank my great sponsors, Muscle Elements. Check them out at Muscle-Elements.com, makers of the truth. We made it all the way to the finals at ProteinWars.com. Also, a great pre-workout by them is Pre-Cree and a great intra-workout, Amino Flow, available at Muscle-Elements.com and Bodybuilding.com. Next, I want to thank IronMagLabs.com. We're working together once again after three long years. I miss the hell out of these guys. They make the best pro hormones, e-blockers, and PCTs in the business. Check them out at ironmaglabs.com. Next, I want to thank tokyonutrition.com, based out of New Hampshire, the live for your die state. We are having a phenomenal sale this week all the way up until February the 10th, where you can get 20% off of everything, the creatines, the glutens, the insane NO boosters, just by using discount code PRIMARIES. Check them out at tokyonutrition.com. Remember, that's Tokyo with two Ks. Next, I want to thank MyOatmeal.com, over 22 billion combinations custom built by you. You pick the size of the bag, the type of the oats, the flavor, the nuts, the berries, and it's shipped to you for a mere $4.95 shipping and handling. Check them out at MyOatmeal.com and use discount code SA15. That'll save you 15% off. And finally, I want to thank MailBasics.com, underwear for and by bodybuilders and fitness enthusiasts. You can check them out at MailBasics.com, also available at Bodybuilding.com. And with them, if you use discount code STA15, you'll save 15% off. So today is February the 7th. I believe this podcast will come out Tuesday night. And I am super excited because, you know, this uh, competitor that we have today, uh, I've been following on Instagram for a while. She has some amazing photos, amazing content. She's done very well for herself on the stage, even though she has a relatively short contest record. And I'm just very, very uh, impressed with her. Um, as usual, of course, I also want to invite everyone to our group, I love the NPC.com, where you can stay up to date with all of our great NPC IFBB uh, athletes that we follow, like today's guest, who is a five time nationally qualified NPC bikini competitor. Think about that five time qualified. That's amazing. And so I have the privilege of welcoming Jessica Delias. Jessica, how are you today? Doing very well, Christian. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And I, I, I can hear a, lick, a little bit of New York in your accent. Are you from, where are you from? Yeah, I'm from uh, Tom's River, New Jersey, uh, right by the, the Jersey Shore by Seaside. I think a lot of people know where that is. That's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, I've been uh, looking at your Instagram for a while and uh, I did some homework on you as I do on all the uh, guests. I don't want to sound like a creeper, you know, until my homework <laughs> on you. But uh, no, um, and I saw that you've uh, you've actually been pretty active. You've had a, a short contest record thus far. You know, you're rather new to the sport, but you've done yeah. uh, quite a lot in the time that you have been active. Uh As I told you off air, you know, my first two questions, whether I do podcasts or I do backstage interviews, they're always, uh, I always start out the interviews with them because I I really think they're important to give the uh, viewer or the listener in this case uh, a real glimpse into your journey. So if you can take us back to, uh, you know, when and why you got started lifting, you know, you know, sort of explain to us what got you into the gym and how you were bitten by the bug. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, pretty much uh, my whole life, I've been an athlete of some form. Primarily, I was a dancer for, uh, gosh, over 12 years, um, mostly ballet. I would train uh, at least five hours every single day. You know, I went to uh, a specialized high school for dance. I would train in classes uh, throughout the tri-state area. I was on a competition team. Um, And I always loved, you know, both the training and the performing aspect of it. And then um, what happened was I went to college in um, New, York, New York City. I went to uh, FIT and I got my fashion degree. Um, there's the girly girl side of me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I ended up switching my focus more towards um, the gym because I wasn't uh, training uh, as dancing. It, I couldn't, I didn't, uh, you know, I wasn't able to do that as often. And so I kind of... Uh, switched to cardio, you know, that good old elliptical machine. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I was bitten by the cardio bug. And so it, I went through a point where I kind of kind of spiraled out of control. And I unfortunately, you know, I suffered from a case of uh, anorexia um, for a while. But I was, you know, fortunate enough to kind of wake up, you know, and uh, realize what I was doing and realize, you know, I got to get healthy. I got to take care of myself. You know, I'm like, what am I doing to myself? And so 
I, I was fortunate enough that I was able to turn myself around and uh, I didn't want to give up fitness in my life. And so it was actually my doctor that kind of recommended, he's like, all right, well, why don't you try weight training instead of the cardio? So I figured, you know, okay, I'll give this a try. And you know what? I, I started weight training and learning how to, you know, train properly. I hired a personal trainer. I learned about proper form and <laughs> the rest is really history. You know, I, I fell in love with it. And that's how I really got into weight training. And then I just turned it into, you know, something I did on a daily basis. And it, it became a big part of my life. Well, that's, you know, that's so refreshing to hear that a doctor is actually promoting weight training, you know, because a lot of times, yeah. you know, doctors are so off the mark, you know what I mean? They're like, oh, why do you want to do that? And you know, just stick to cardio, go out for walks, that kind of thing. So it's, it's really refreshing to hear that a doctor, and I think, you know, word is getting out, you know, there's um, so many benefits to lifting weights, you know, both, yeah. you know, physically as well as emotionally. I mean, just your spirits and your self-esteem all go through the roof. But I, of course, I do understand, though, also, as far as cardio goes, because I remember over the years, you know, when I've gotten really into dieting, um, you know, I've taken various products or whatever, you know, all legal, of mm -hmm. course. But, uh, you know, <laughs> when you do when you do cardio, it's like rather addictive. You know what I mean? Like you could, yes. I could do yeah. like there was a time where I could do uh, two hours actually on the treadmill. Yeah. And it's just, you know, especially because I'll do theater cardio. So I'm watching a movie and I don't want to get off. I want to watch the movie. And right. I've, I've, I've looked down, I've burned 1500 calories and I'm only taking in 2000. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's yeah. addictive. It's you get in the zone and you know, you just keep going. Absolutely. Now in terms of competition, you know, like I've told you before, there are people that can go to the gym and make just insane gains, insane transformation, have the abs, in, in the, the ladies' case, have the insane glutes and all that. But um, it's good enough for them to sort of strut their stuff, if you will, in the gym or at the beach. But then to get on stage, you know, do like a 12 or 16-week prep and, you know, be in front of judges and an audience, it's just like a little too much. So, um, yeah. you know, who or what, I guess, inspired you to want to do that? Well, really, I mean, I'm, I'm a performer at heart. You know, that comes from the dancing background. I've been <clears throat> on the stage since I was, what, eight years old, and I've always loved that stage. But um, really what got me to decide, you know, I want to, you know, get on the competition stage uh, at the MPC is – um, uh, when I was actually planning my wedding, I kind of lived on Pinterest and uh, a lot of the things I would also look up, you know, besides, you know, centerpieces and all that mm -hmm. was, um, different workouts because, you know, I was trying to tone up a bit, you know, for getting ready for the big day. And when I would look up, you know, certain workouts, all of these amazing, you know, pins of women would come up and they'd be, you know, on stage in their suits and, you know, the makeup and these incredible physiques. And I just thought, you know, wow, you know, like this is a way that I could take, you know, my day to day training and then get back on the stage with it. And it just mm -hmm. was right up my alley. And so, you know, I decided after the wedding, I said, you know what, all right, now I'm going to go for it. This is, you know, this is right up my alley. I want to pursue this. That's awesome. And, you know, I, not to be sexist or anything, but I've heard my girlfriends told me that Pinterest is, uh, a little bit, well, not, she says it's a lot bigger with women. And I have a Pinterest yeah. for strength addicts. And I, I don't think I've ever posted because it's actually called pinning. I, I don't, I don't understand it. I really, I, I tried so hard, you know, like I got into Instagram yeah. and I absolutely hate Twitter, but I'm sort of getting into Twitter. <laughs> Pinterest, I have no idea. I feel like, like I, I'm like missing a chromosome or something or like a chromosome <laughs> is out of whack. I don't even know. It's like really weird. Um, but that's cool. And, and I think it's great though that you're, you know, so active on social media and we'll talk about that a little bit later and another very important question is where you decide to compete so if you could talk to us about why you chose the MPC and also why you chose to compete in the bikini division yeah well I mean the MPC is I chose because it's the most prestigious and you know the largest uh, amateur one out there and as far as why I wanted to do bikini is because that's the physique of a bikini competitor, I find, you know, is perfect for my body. I have a very, you know, smaller frame and I love the look of, you know, a little bit fuller, focusing on the glutes, you know, that sexy look of the bikini division. I really, really admire and it's definitely how I would want to bring my physique uh, on stage and how I would love to look. Absolutely. And, you know, what I really appreciate is that, you know, you mentioned the word sexy a couple times and, you know, 
here's someone that's married, here's someone that, you know, takes her career seriously. I don't think that there's an issue with being sexy as long as you're classy at the same time. Absolutely not. Yeah, that's your your body's a beautiful thing. There's nothing wrong with, you know, being sexy on stage as long as you're classy. Absolutely. I completely agree. Okay, now talk to us about your first and second show because generally from a first to a second show you might see a place or two improvement but in your case you actually prepped yourself the first show didn't place sort of where you wanted to be and then worked with someone and then you won the overall in your uh, class yeah um so my first competition i uh, did the this was right when i decided i wanted to get on stage uh i prepped on my own and i knew a lot about you know proper form and I knew pretty much you know what to do for the diet and I would research a lot and look into what previous competitors would do and have some of them give me tips and I mean I came in with a package you know I was a little lacking some muscle and you know I didn't have the guidance of a coach to really be able to you know, guide me and show me what my body needs, like on a weekly basis. And that's when I turned to, um, I joined team bombshell, um, because I chose bombshell because I mean, when I would look and see all of these athletes that I found so inspirational, a lot of what they had in common was they were bombshells. And so I decided to join team bombshell. And then, uh, first I worked with, uh, my coach, uh, Gigi Amaral and she, uh, I mean, she, she whipped my butt really, <laughs> um, between training and diet. And, you know, I would check in with her at, at least once a week and she would, um, tell me, you know, adjustments I'd need to make and, you know, give me tips and pointers and, you know, the bombshell, the, the workouts that they have you do, like, it's, it's amazing. And so I, you know, my training, I took it to such a higher level when I joined the team and it really, you know, it showed in the results. Definitely. You know, I was, uh, it was surreal. You know, I went from, I placed sixth, uh, when I competed on my own to winning, you know, overall, I placed, uh, first in, you know, junior, my class and was novice overall. And then competed again. Uh, the week after that and then was the open overall it was just you know amazing what having that guidance having the the coach uh having bombshells like you know help me it made such a difference and it, it was incredible absolutely you know one of the things that i always tell people you know they're like oh but i don't want to pay dues to a team or this or that or i don't want to be you know directed or this or that and you know this sport is so expensive, you know, I mean, yes. as, as a writer, I can see it. I mean, I don't actively uh, compete, but I can, of course, see it and I've heard about it and I read about it. And if you have the opportunity to join, in my opinion, there's really three teams in bikini that I can say honestly are just the best. There's Edge, Bombshell and Odo's Angels. If you can join mm -hmm. any one of those three groups, and I almost think Bombshell and, and the Angels probably I, any of the three of those groups then I think it's a great investment because those groups are not, you know, hard up for cash. If you no. go to those groups and you don't look the way they think that, you know, in other words, you have to have the potential to get a pro card. If you don't have the potential to get a pro card, if you don't have the potential to be on the national stage, I don't think they're going to accept you. They'll probably tell you, you know, come back in a year, work on this, work on that. So I think what's important is, is that if you, and I think that anybody I think the vast majority of people that get an MPC card want to turn pro at some point. And so if you want to turn pro, you have to do everything in your power to turn pro. And you can't cut corners. You can't cut corners on your suit. Some girls will get hand-me-downs that are not made for their physiques, and that actually hurts them in the scoring. Some yeah. girls will not get, you know, the good makeup artist. You know, some girls will go to a salon that does really no type of business with competition and will not, you know, do a good job for the stage and they don't do their tanning right. So basically what I'm saying is if you want that pro card, you have to do everything in your power to get there. And if you have the opportunity to join an organization like Team Bombshell, you'd be a fool not to. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, exactly what you were saying. I mean, they help you. It's not just about, you know, training and diet. It's about the whole package with, you know, your suit, your posing, your tan, your makeup, your everything, you know, every step of the way, learning how to be confident in your body. You know, they help you with everything. So, you know, paying your dues to a team is it ends up being so worth it in the long run because you really you get your bang for your buck and then some 
Absolutely. And they really help you. And the other thing too, I think also, I mean, from what I've heard is the camaraderie backstage, I think is also yes. very important. So um, again, I, I, I can't say enough good things about Team Bombshell. Uh, and it sounds like you can't either. So that's great. No. Um, now, in terms of your dieting, uh, I've noticed that you've said that you have a rather strong approach against the whole low carb dieting. And I myself share in that opinion. I, you know, I worked at rxmuscle.com for a couple of years and, uh, you know, I've, I've read a lot of the stuff that Dave Palumbo puts out and there's a, a very mm -hmm. big push uh, for ketogenic dieting. But I also have heard a lot of horror stories, not of people trained necessarily by Dave, but just people in general that have a lot of metabolic damage, which in and of itself is a whole other uh, debate. You know, some yeah. people say that metabolic damage is a myth and some people say that it's, you know, it's, it's a, a real problem. Um, what's your take on low carb dieting and what's your take on uh, effective dieting? Yeah, I, I'm definitely against um, the constant low carb diets. And I mean, I speak from experience because I've, I've tried it before, you know, where you just have, you know, your, your meats some fats, and then you just skip out on any kind of rice and maybe you'll, you know, have veggies and you're only getting the, the cellulose, you know, and it just, it backfires because yeah, you'll, you'll lose some body fat if that's, that's your goal, you, it'll drop, but then it's not something that you can really sustain energy on i mean because you're not giving yourself energy so then you know you'll reintroduce the carbs and then your body just you know you, you store it and then some so it, it mm -hmm. backfires i don't believe that it's a proper proper nutrition for your body you're not giving your body what it needs especially especially when you're training um to compete absolutely and, and the one thing that you said too the the the, the real buzzword that you said is constant i mean if it's you know, for a yeah. few weeks or something, or for the last week of the comp of the preparation, but constant low carb ketogenic dieting, in my opinion, is uh, you know it, it's counterproductive if your goal is to build muscle or even to maintain muscle. I, I just don't, I don't yeah. see how uh, using uh, ketone bodies for fuel is going to like do the same thing as a balanced diet. I, I just don't see it. Um, now, in terms of your dieting approach, what would you say? Um, what would you say you do? Whether you're off season, do you have do you have a dirty off season? Do you or do you keep it clean in the off season or or, or moderately clean? Um, what, what, I guess what what is it, what do your meals look like in the quote unquote season and off season? Yeah, and well during contest prep, um, I mean my my meals don't change that much um, between uh, on season and off season uh, in term just in terms of the amount. I mean, I always have six meals a day. I'm always with every meal. There's always, you know, my three ounces of protein, um, some form of carb and some form of uh, healthy fat. Um, it, the only time that I would not have carbs is, you know, right before bed, but um, you know, eating every two to three hours, six meals a day, uh, very balanced between protein, carbs, and fats. And um, the only big difference is in my on season, I will have, two days that I have less carbs. I don't completely omit them from my diet during the day, but I will have less carbs two days a week on my rest days, the days that I don't train. And then during my off season, which is right now, I will have, you know, my carbs are definitely up and I actually, you know, keep increasing them as I get, you know, build more and more muscle. And then I also have a seventh meal added on, on my uh, workout days as like a post-workout with the extra protein and carbs. So it's always, you know, always balanced between protein, carbs, and fats every single meal. But I, you know, just the volume is more during my off season. Now, when you uh, eat at home with your husband, are you, I mean, are you eating different meals? Uh, do you generally eat the same thing or how uh, does we, that work? We generally eat the same thing. Um, we actually... Sundays are our meal prep days. We actually uh, prep all our food together. You know, he has his food during the day. Uh, we eat the same type of same type of meals. Basically, he just you know eats a little more because he's a guy. Um, mm -hmm. But we pretty much try to stay on the same diet. Um, so he's I mean he's also you know big into lifting, not not competing, but he uh, he trains as well. Okay. Now, as far as hydration goes, I mean, do you drink like pop or soda or coffee, that kind of thing? And, and in terms of water, how much water are you getting a day? Uh, I do love coffee. Um, I have coffee really probably only about like a, a cup per day. Um, and then besides that, I just I love water and I drink about a gallon and a half every single day. Wow, <laughs> that's really good. 
That's yeah. really, really good. Now, in terms of your approach to training, and I, I really want to focus, uh, we talked a little bit about cardio before, but as far as your training goes, when you're in the gym, like when you walk into the gym, are you uh, a machines person, a free weights person? Um, do you generally work out maybe with your husband or with uh, with a girl, like a workout partner, or do you work out by yourself? Do you have headphones on? Like, just basically give us the whole, like, like, like give us the skinny on when you walk into the gym, what's your whole strategy? Yeah, I mean, well, as soon as I walk in, I pretty much get into, um, like, beast mode, and I just, you know, I have my headphones on. Uh, most of the time, I'm training on my own, and I do... Uh, it's a combination between uh, a lot of free weights um, and machines. Uh, I do, you know, I, I change it up and my workouts change every single week. You know, my coach gives me a new workout uh, every day, every week. So it's always changing, always keeping my body guessing. And um, the, I do actually have my husband comes along and helps me out when I'm uh, get going heavier. Um, he'll spot me and then, then we'll work out to the, together. But generally I tend to work out on my own and I just get into, you know, this mode where I'm, you know, just, uh, going really hard and, um, that that's right. You know, that's, now when you say your husband helps you, does he help you in the sense that he spots you or does he help you in the sense that you're doing forced reps? He spots me. Okay. So yeah, he's, he's there to, you know, make sure I don't, you know, drop anything or For anything sure. falls on me. <laughs> now, are you, are you, um, as part of your workout plans, are you expected to do X amount of reps and X amount of sets? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Now, when you're in the gym, I know we talked about cardio before, but, um, cardio, uh, used effectively now, uh, how would you, what do you do cardio wise? Because there's a lot of a lot of people are, you know, they swear by the elliptical or they swear by the treadmill or some people swear by the stairs. And it seems like a pretty uh, general consensus that no one uses the bikes at all. No. Um, so I, I, what's your, what's your uh, uh, um, I guess, your uh, cardio machine of choice, if you will? Uh, I like to do a combination. Um, every week I either hit the the treadmill or the stairs, or I do, um, kind of like a plyometrics, uh, you know, with jumping rope and high knees and circuits, basically. Um, I like to kind of change it up. So I always hit the, I, I go on the treadmill, um, usually like two to three times a week. I just do cardio, um, maybe half hour, uh, five days a week. And I'll do the treadmill, you know, like uh, sprint intervals, or I'll do the Stairmaster. Um, I, I personally love the stairs. I, mm -hmm. I could live on that thing. Cool. Um, I like to do, you know, a combination of you know, forwards, backwards, you know, kickbacks. Um, so treadmill and stairs and uh, plyometrics is really what I focus on. Absolutely. And do you ever do for your cardio, do you ever just like run outside or jog? Or because I, I've noticed that a lot of people, prefer the gym, not just because it's indoors, but because they have all the statistical information that the machine gives. Yeah, I like having the machine there. So everything's, you know, I'm, I'm in control of everything. Uh, sure. I mean, I, I like to go, you know, there's a, a reservoir over here, it'll be nice to go for like a little jog or, or walk like now mm -hmm. and then, but I, especially during during contest prep, I'm more adamant about making sure, sure I get on the machines. Absolutely. Now talk to us a little bit about uh, your work with uh, G force nutrition. Sort of talk to us about um, how you hooked up with them and uh, how they've been for you. Yeah, um, G Force Nutrition is awesome. Um, I'm a promotional model for them, and I actually use I use their their pre workout and um, sleep aid supplements. That, I mean, they they really help out a lot because they're they're clean. I like that they're a very clean company, and um, they're up and coming. And I got connected with them. Um, with a uh, Glenn Nolan, the CEO, he actually goes to my gym uh, over here in Tom's River, and so I uh, met up with him, and we kind of connected, and you know, I ended up uh, working with them, and you know, it's that's how I got started with them. That's phenomenal. And again, you know, a restful night's sleep is so important, especially if you know if you're you know drinking like you said a gallon and a half of water a day, and you're having all these meals, and you're going to the gym. If you can't have a restful sleep, then you're, you're going to sabotage yourself. So it sounds like those supplements are really important for you. Now, in terms of social media and self-promotion, uh, they seem to be imperatives for uh, any successful athlete nowadays. What's your approach to those? 
I definitely agree uh, with that. I mean, I think nowadays, you know, if you want to promote yourself, you want to get networking, you got to get on, on social media. And, you know, that's why, I mean, I kind of started late in the great, late in the game on my, my Instagram and I only just <laughs> signed up for Instagram this past August. So right now I'm kind of in overdrive to get, you know, get myself really out there and network. But I believe that it is nowadays you need, you really, I think you need social media to promote yourself because it's how, people connect to you. Absolutely. And in terms of photography, I mean, a lot of your shots are really cool. I mean, you like to take a lot of selfies, which I think is important. Um, I really like selfies and I'll tell you why, because, you know, some people take photos like with, you know, great photographers and that's super cool. But, you know, sometimes photos are, you know, they're panned out or photoshopped, you know what I mean? There's yeah. lighting effects. When you have the physique where you can grab a phone and just take a shot um, and it looks so great. I mean, that I think without any effects, without any, you know, uh, photoshopping, I think that's really cool. You know what I mean? So I think that's, yeah. that's, that's definitely something. And plus I, I noticed that people on Instagram really like to see the journey day by day. They like to see how your body changes, uh, through the training and the diet. And I think it inspires yeah. them to also want to do the same. Absolutely. And that's, that's what I like to do. You know, I also like to use my Instagram to inspire people, you know, get get out there and meet their own fitness goals. Absolutely. Now, in terms of 2016, where, you know, we're just into the second month of the year. Um, what are some of your contest plans? And what are some of your other plans in terms of projects involving fitness? Yeah, well, right now, um, I'm focusing on having a really good improvement season. Um, you know, I want to put on a, a good amount of mass because um, I'm really looking into uh, June 4th, uh, Atlantic States uh, in Teaneck. I'm, I'm looking into that one. That's a, a big contender as well as um, uh, after that, then there's the Excalibur Cup uh, in Pennsylvania. And then um, I'm also looking at uh, Garden States, uh, I believe it's June 25th over here in, in New Jersey, and then I'm, you know, paving my way to that to that national stage, Team U. That's phenomenal, and I'll tell you something, Team U is a tough, tough show. Yeah. Um, I'm good friends with Artie Caldwell Jr. He won the 2014 MPC uh, Team Universe overall in bodybuilding, and uh, it's a it's a tough show. And what's cool about it though is that the winners of Team U go on to represent the United States in the World Games, which is, you know, unlike any other national level show. I mean, it's, it's just yeah. absolutely phenomenal. I, I can't say, say enough about um, about that competition, um, Team Universe. Now, uh, the last question, the most important question of all, um, who would you like to thank for where you are today? Um, well, first and foremost, I need to thank my husband. You know, he's been with me every step of the way. He supports me more than I could ever ask. You know, he helps me, you know, when it comes to meal prepping and working out and, and even the the mental aspect of it. He really, you know, keeps me balanced and he helps me in every single way. And, you know, my parents have been an incredible supporter of me every step of the way. And I mean, Team Bombshell, I can't thank enough. I mean, they've completely helped me transform my physique and have been helping me really, really meet my goals. And the MPC, I want to thank as well. You know, it's an honor to be able to compete with them. Absolutely. Well, I really want to thank you for taking the time. I really enjoyed the interview. It's going to be available at strengthetics.com and probably like 100 Facebook groups. So again, uh, thank you very much for five-time nationally qualified MPC bikini competitor and Team Bombshell member, Jessica Delias, Christian Duke, strengthaddicts.com.